Welcome to your walkthrough in a 2024 front engine diesel Canyon Star floor plan 3947. If you come with me up to the front of the coach, we'll start our walkthrough at the driver's seat. And in on the left side armrest area, you'll see that we have the equalizer leveling system. Uh, the equalizer leveling system is compatible um, through connections um, with uh, Bluetooth. Um, you can refer to your owner's operating, operating manual for those uh, connections. But uh, in general, you would use uh, the touch panel here. The touch panel gives you um, auto level for your leveling of the coach. Um, but it also gives you the, op the opportunity to uh, use these up and down for each jack separately. So, and this would be when you come to the park and you want to get your coach level, um, you would turn the touch pad on. And you can see here we do have our ignition on. Um, the ignition has to be on uh, for the jacks to operate. So if I turn the key off, you'll notice that LED light goes out. Or if I turn the power switch, it will also go out here. So I have to turn the power on. Then I turn the ignition, the key to ignition on. I don't need to start the coach. We can just turn the ignition on to level the coach. Now, obviously, you want to level the coach after you run the slide outs to the extended position. So leveling always happens after you deploy your slide outs. So in the, the easiest way to level here would just be to hit the auto level. Once we turn the touchpad on and our key to ignition on, we just press the auto level button and you can hear the the pump motor for the jacks running the lights are flashing and you can hear the jacks are extending and you'll feel as the jacks touch the ground you'll start to feel the coach uh, move to the level position so it will take a few minutes for the complete process for leveling. You can hear the tone of the jacks change a little bit as they get more weight put on them. If for any reason during the leveling process you were on too much of an angle and the jacks weren't able to completely level the coach, you would get the LED light that might come on for excess slope. If that happens, you would obviously need to uh, move to a more level area for the jacks to make the coach level. You'll feel the coach making its final adjustments Um, the adjustments get slightly shorter and shorter until the coach is completely level. So you can see now the operating LED light went off. Uh, the buzzing or, or sound alarms tone went off. And all of our lights here are flashing, showing that our jacks have deployed and we are now level. So we can turn the touchpad off. We can turn the key off, then our touchpad off, and we've completely leveled the coach. The same can be done using the manual buttons, but the shortest uh, way, easiest way to level is just hit the auto level button because it's all automatic uh, and it's based on uh, the leveling module that's located uh, you know in the coach already and it senses when the coach is level so when we're ready to uh, retract the jacks 
uh, we would do the same thing. We would turn our key on and then just simply hit all retract. You can see the operating light came on. You can feel the coach moving slightly as the jacks are retracting. If at any time during the process you would see a low voltage light or if you would see the engage park brake, you would have to engage the park brake, which is here. You have to pull it or have it engaged. Otherwise, that light will come on. But if you see a low voltage light, you'd want to check your batteries or, and or your charging system because these jacks operate off of a motor that's using 12 volt DC power. Okay, we're completely we have completed our retracting all of our jacks operating light is off so now we can uh, go ahead and start our engine if we were ready to move the coach and uh, turn our power off and we're finished with the leveling so we'll turn that off and just in front of the leveling system is our mirror adjustments um, you want to make sure before you travel that your left and right mirrors are in a position where you can see uh, to the rear and on the sides of the coach. If there's any frost or any moisture on the mirrors, we can turn the mirror heat on. The heater in the mirror will melt or dissipate the moisture or frost. Ice if that's on, it's illuminated, and then the heat pad under the mirror is on, and we'll take care of that moisture. Um, if you're, if you don't have any moisture um, or any issue with frost, ice, you can just leave that off. Once you've made your adjustments, left, right, up, and down to each mirror, left and right, put that adjustment knob in the center so that it, in case you inadvertently bump those, it won't change the settings that you made. In front of that, we have our cup holder and we have our uh, charging station for our phone here. Just set your phone there and it will charge. We have the headlights and marker lights on or automatic. So if we go to the left, then they are on automatically. Zero is off. That's just the marker lights, parking lights, and then the headlights on uh, switch there. Below that, we have our parking brake. We always want to set the parking brake to on, or uh, we want to pull it towards us as we're seated. When you pull it towards you, that locks the brakes of the coach so it doesn't move. When we're ready to travel, we've got our engine running. To release the parking brake so that you can move the coach, you just press in and that releases the brakes. So now you can put your coach into drive or reverse and you would be able to move the coach. But if we're parked or we want to stop and get out of the coach, we always want to pull the parking brake and that sets the brakes then we always want to put the coach in neutral after we set the parking brake so that it doesn't move. The lever just below the parking brake is the hood release for the front of the coach. So to release that hood, just pull back and that will release the front hood. Just below that, there's a pedal here. When you press down, now you can see my wheel wants to move automatically forward it's got some spring tension so that moves out of your way when you get into the driver's seat you can move that and you can adjust it the tilt wherever you like uh, before you drive once you have it adjusted where you like then you release your foot and it locks it into place so press down unlock move to where you like release and it locks or you can press it and just move it all the way up out of your way 
when you exit the driver's seat. So just to, uh, on our left turn signal here, we have additional controls uh, for the headlights, for the wipers, and for the wiper wash. So wiper wash, just you press, push that in, and that will put your wipers into a wash cycle. You can adjust the speed of the wipers here. This is intermittent here and off. Headlights here, if we have our headlights turned on, you can see there's an indicator of the bright lights or dim lights. So I can turn it on bright headlights or dim right there. Left signal, right turn signal. On the steering wheel, uh, there is uh, our cluster on the left. Our cluster is what you see here. The home screen, if you press the home screen, that's gonna give your selection for what you can view on this glass dash. This, is, of course, is a Freightliner glass dash. When I press the home screen, I can see gauges, fuel economy, uh, trip one and two, um, my vehicle settings, diagnostics, and menu. And to scroll to any one of those, I just press the arrow down or up. And then once I get to the setting I like to change or view, then I press the center button, which is okay. So I wanna view diagnostics and I press diagnostics. Now I can see faults, internal diagnostics, transmission, prognostics, system information. So which one of those I would like to view, then I again go moving the arrow. Let's say I wanted to look at the transmission. I press OK again, and there I can see filter status and my oil life. If there was an issue with the oil level, it would be displayed. So if I want to return back to the home screen, I can just press the home button and I'm back. So any one of those, as soon as you are highlighted on it, just press the OK and then you can select up or down in those categories. Engine loads, gears, oil pressure, coolant, turbo boost. The small icon on the left here of the cluster is your favorites selection. And if you press and hold that for five seconds in any one of these menus, then it pairs with that so that you can quickly press it and go back to that setting. In this case, I paired it with my Bluetooth so I could pair with my phone so I could make calls quickly. So it doesn't matter which screen you go to, as long as you're on that screen and you press that for five seconds, it pairs with that screen. So then no matter if you're at your home screen looking at any one of the other menus, if I decide, well, I want to pair my phone again, I can just press that button and I'm back to my Bluetooth pairing. Obviously the, the center is your horn and on the right side of the wheel is another cluster which is for your uh, setting your cruise control and canceling it. So to set my cruise control you can see here uh, I don't have any RPMs but the icon that you see here will appear if my engine is on and I'm running um, uh, on the highway. I press that and then I'll be able to set my speed or resume. If I want to cancel my cruise, just press the center button to cancel it. The small button on the right is for flashing my marker lights. So I can flash those marker lights if my lights are on or off, they will flash. Um, this is your telephone. If you've paired uh, your phone with Bluetooth, like we were talking about here, if you pair your phone, then you'll be able to make a call here hands-free and then hang up.
So this, this is how the glass dash looks when it's off, but as soon as you turn the ignition one click to the right without starting the engine, you'll be able to see the glass dash appears and all the icons are illuminated. And whenever you make an adjustment to uh, the lights, turn signals, or other functions on the wheel, that icon will appear for what adjustments you just made. So again, we looked at the turn signal um, or any of the other functions, they will come on. Starting at the left, you've got your um, RPM indicate, indicator. You've got your home screen. Obviously, that's this is where your home screen is at and all your selections are made here. We, we can see here that our parking brake is on. We have no RPMs because the engine is off. Over on the left is our coolant temperature for our engine, our pounds per square inch for our oil, oil pressure, trip meter, engine fuel, which that's diesel, and it says ultra low sulfur diesel only. We have our uh, distance to empty here, our battery voltage, um, our PSI indicator, um, front and rear, or one and two. And as we talked about earlier, and whenever we make it an adjustment or turn something on, like our headlights, we get the indication here. Moving over uh, to the right side of the wheel, uh, to turn the wheel, we would need to have the engine on to help assist. So if we turn our wheel just a little bit, we can see on the right side here, there's uh, another adjustment for air brake and drive or reverse and for shifting here, manual. So those adjustments are uh, made here. You can see Whenever I make an adjustment here, then I'll be able to see if I if I hold the brake down and I press and I go to drive, you can see it goes to D1, neutral or reverse. And again, this is manual or automatic shift here on the side. That's, uh, that's our brake and how much our brake is adjusted. Uh, we can make those adjustments for our air brake right here. Just in front of the shift and brake lever on the right side of the wheel, there's your emergency hazards. So you can press that and they'll come on without the ignition key on. So, and just press it again to turn them off. So we've moved over here to the center of our dash and you can see here we're scrolling through the menu. So in our, this is actually um, a multifunction radio system and when you press the menu button you'll see the different selections you can make. We were at the Bluetooth and we'll go back there in a minute but you've got your radio and you can tune your radio to selections you like. You can go to your media center and make your selections here. You've got Sirius XM. No signal because we're in a building. There's Bluetooth where we were. And what you want to do is make sure your Bluetooth is on in your phone, but then you can pair. What you'll do is you'll search for that number on your phone, you can see here, I can see that number that's on the screen. Press that one and then you'll pair the radio core with your phone. Mine is called iPhone 2. So I would be able then, you have to allow it in your phone, but now I've connected my phone to the radio core 
so I can play music on my phone through the radio system, um, make telephone calls, um, everything that the Bluetooth offers I can make now that I've connected. So you have to make that connection first, then you can use your phone to make calls hands-free here on the dash. So if we go back, we have additional um, plugs. We have auxiliary plugs. One that you'll probably use a lot is your camera control. So if we're here at the, the menu and we press camera control, we have selections of our camera. Our camera view is on the right what we see from the cameras outside, but we can change this view by pressing any one of these selections. So this is my right side of the coach. This is my left side of the coach. And those will automatically come on when you're driving and you turn right with the right turn signal or left for your left turn signal. Whenever you put your coach in reverse, the reverse or rear camera will come on. But you can make those selections manually just by pressing it, uh, going to the camera control. iPod um, navigation. Now you can see there's navigation here. If you're in the menu and you press nav, you have to accept. And now you you are using the navigation system and GPS uh, signal um, through the radio core. So you can either press navigation here, or if you're in the menu selection, you can press navigation there. And then of course, you've got a menu and you can set your routes um, or use the routes that are already preset. Our last uh, selection is our setup. And of course you can go through the setup screen and set up your system um, to the way you like um, and the settings you like um, for, let's see, there's only two page, there's only one page in that one. But anyway, you can go through and go to each one of these icons and preset the a system to the way you like. There is, if you look at the bottom of the screen, one that's called house mode. So this is the button that you want to press. You can see how it highlighted to a, a yellow bar on the left. That means your house mode is on. Whenever your house mode is on, uh, that means that you could go to the outside entertainment center and you would hear whatever you're playing for music outside. So you have to have the house mode on in order to hear the entertainment center radio selection that you've made here. So if you don't want to hear the radio here outside at the entertainment center, then leave the house mode off. So just leave that off and then you could make the selection for the television outside. Uh, there is a dim switch here uh, for bright or dim. There is a favorites button here, but you can select your favorites. To turn this screen on the left off, you can just press and hold here. The volume is to the right, but uh, you can press release. And then you see the splash screen here. That means that it's off. Press it again and that turns it on. Takes a second for it to power up. You can also make setting adjustments here for your camera view, um, bright or dim. You can see it's changing brighter, dimmer, contrast, color, and then there's off. So we've got dimming, brightness, and contrast, and color. And you can independently turn that screen off as well. Uh, moving down here, you've got your, obviously, your ignition key here. 
the first click is ignition on and then when you turn it again that's starting the engine you have your overhead fans on off and low you have to have your ignition on to hear that so you can hear my fans in the overhead are on those are used to move the air in the front windshield area for defrosting there's off in the center or high fans at the top I have my dome light above us my visor is the shade in front of the nightshade then you have your nightshade here if you'll notice I've got the key ignition turned on so if I bring the nightshade up and then try to go back down it won't go down it stays at the halfway point that's a safety feature that Numar builds in so you have to have your key off or ignition off in order for you to move that shade all the way down that's just in case you're driving and you have your key on you don't want that shade to come down battery boost this is going to help you start your engine if for some reason your chassis batteries might be low uh, and they might need a boost you would hold that down for 60 seconds and that connects the house batteries with the chassis battery and helps boost them to start your engine just to the right of that we have our generator start stop switch if you press and hold the start in the up position you'll see the light flashing you'll hear the priming and preheat starting in the generator and then it'll start up if you are not plugged into shore power and you need to run a 120 volt appliance start your generator that will also charge your batteries if your inverter is turned on. When you're done with the generator and you want to shut it off, just press stop. The cluster to the right here on the bottom is for our heating and air conditioning in the cockpit area only. So when you're driving and you want to use the, the cooling system or the heating system, from the engine then you would turn this to the fan setting you like as long as this is turned on to at least number one then you'll see the settings here that you can turn on if the key is engaged so the snowflake is for air conditioning so if I press that you'll see the little LED light comes on that tells you that your air conditioning compressor is turned on and as long as there is refrigerant in the system, uh, you'll have cooling. Now, to get the cooling a little bit faster in the cockpit area, if you press the recirculate button, then the air that's in the coach will stay in here and cool down faster. If you don't press the recirculate, then you get some air from the outside mixed in. It'll still cool, but just not as fast. So for faster cooling, and faster heating press the recirculate if you need to defrost it's sometimes better just to let a little bit of fresh air come in and not recirculate to turn the air conditioning off just press and the LED light goes out higher fan speeds just turn to higher setting warm or cold you can run the compressor uh, and uh, you can leave it in the warm mode if you're defrosting um, but for cooling, you want to have this all the way to the left, and then you make your selection of which position you want the warm or cool air to come out. This is for defrost over here, defrost floor, just floor only, floor and mid-level, and then you've got mid-level only here. 
turning it off is just going to zero. The ignition has to be on for this fan to work. Just below that, we have another storage drawer, and this is the panel for the engine access. So you just want to rotate these counterclockwise, and this panel will lift out for servicing the engine. There's an additional panel here for the same to get down in servicing the engine compartment. So just above the driver's seat here, there's another cabinet. This cabinet is for storage, but there's also your router for your Wi-Fi Ranger. So this is the router and the connection information is here along with the password. So um, once you um, turn your laptop or your phone or your iPad on, use uh, this information to log into your router. Just to the right there is a plug. Um, this is a 12 volt uh, plug for the uh, Wi-Fi router, and that needs to be plugged in to be turned on. Once it's turned on, you'll notice an LED light that illuminates. This cabinet over here is just another one for storage. These shades are all manual, so if you pull down and release, you see here uh, you can stop and it will stay locked in position. This is your passenger window to unlock and open. Just lift and then pull the window open. You have a screen here. Close and then relock. Just below that, we've got our map light and phone charger. Just lay your phone here to charge. Behind that, we have our 120 volt outlet and USB uh, station charging. And near the floor is an LP detection uh, warning system. So um, there's an LED light that's on that tells you that it's working, it's in operation. If there was an LP issue or leak in the coach, that would uh, signal uh, warning sound alarm. Both the driver and the passenger seat are powered with 12 volt motion forward and reverse, up and down. It moves the whole base. Tilt, it tilts the whole seat forward and back. And there is a latching release for the entire seat to rotate towards the living room area. So as long as my seat back is forward enough, so if I wanna make sure my seat is out of the way from the couch and the back is not going to hit. Now I can release this lever and I'll be able to turn the entire seat over towards the living room area. So after I'm done, if I'm in this position, I want to move it back to travel. I just want to move the arm rest back. As I rotate the seat around, it will automatically lock in the forward position once it's straight forward. You can feel it locked. On the passenger seat, there is a footrest here, and the lever is the same type of levers, just on the right side. So if I pull that lever on the right side, my footrest will come out here. Obviously, there's not much room for the footrest to come out in this position, but if we had our seat rotated this way, then I could open the footrest out into the living room area. So the operation for the adjustments for the driver's seat are the same as the passenger seat, except there is no footrest. So we still have the same forward and reverse tilt. And we have the release for our seat back. So on the left-hand side of the driver's seat only, there is a small rocker switch for the lumbar support 
if you press that switch forward, you'll feel the lumbar moving. If you press it the opposite direction, it retracts. There is a latch release here. So if we pull that, we can rotate this seat around towards the living room area. Once we move as far as we can to get forward of the wheel, we can just move our seat forward a little and then finish rotating around. When we're done with having a seat face the living room area, we just rotate it back this way. And it automatically locks into place. So moving into the living room area, we have our lighting switch for ceiling, seating, wall accent, high and low. We have storage above here. At our window, the shade is manual. To open the window, just crank open and closed. There's a screen on both sides so you can open either one or both. So to open the sofa up into a bed, I'm going to remove the pillows and grab in the base and lift up and it folds out. You'll have to move the cushions a little bit into position. And there you have your sofa bed. To retract it back in the original sofa position, just lift up. And you will have to adjust these slightly. Get them back in the sofa position. We can put our pillows back. So moving over into the door area, we've got our fantastic vent control, which is the fantastic vent in the kitchen. We have our patio light. You can see turn on and off. And we have our ceiling light controls for bathroom, bedroom, accent lights, high and low. Just one press turns them on and off. You can see the accent lights here. The bedroom and the bath we can't see, but they do illuminate or they go out when it's off. And then there is the high and low settings. To turn the fantastic vent on, it's the button at the top, the on off switch turns it on. You can hear it going up and then the fan coming on. The speed of the fan can be adjusted to lower setting speed here. There is a rain sensor. If the rain sensor is on, then the fan lid will automatically close and the motor turns off. But if you want to override the rain sensor, and sometimes you may have to do that if there's just moisture on it, but it's not raining, you just press and hold the down button for three seconds. You can see the red light came on for the rain sensor and that overrides the rain sensor so that you could turn the fan on and it would come on regardless of any moisture or even rain. So to turn that back off so the rain sensor is turned on, just press and hold for three seconds and the LED light goes out. So now the rain sensor is activated again. To turn the fan off, just press once again on the top on off switch and you hear the fan shut off and the lid is closing in the kitchen area. Just above the door, 
We have our main control panel for the coach. We have our power control system central monitor panel. This panel is uh, going to tell you what power source you are on. Currently, we're on our 50 amp service. To scroll through the panel and see the other settings, just go down arrow. It gives you line statuses, line one and line two, because we're on 50 amp. If we go back to the up arrow, you can see here it scrolls back up the opposite direction, line one and line two. If at any time the load shed status page is being viewed, if any of these items in the load status say off, see right now they're all on, that would mean that the automatic load shedding system has turned that block heater or that garage air conditioner or that bedroom air conditioner off. It may appear to be on because the fan might be running, but the compressor is what's being load shed on those air conditioners. So again, if you see that they're on, typically you're on 50 amp and they wouldn't need to be load shed, but if we were plugged into a smaller cord where this automatically will switch to a 30 amp setting, then you would probably start to see some of these loads being shed and those appliances would not be able to come back on until you either turn the generator on or you were plugged back into 50 amp service. Just to the right of our load management system is our Xantrex inverter. The inverter powers up the appliances in the kitchen like the refrigerator so that we can operate the refrigerator even though we might not have the generator running or be plugged into shore power. So if we were dry camping and we wanted the refrigerator to be on, we would make sure that our inverter was turned on. The other function that the inverter does is it charges the batteries. So we want to make sure if we're plugged in or the generator's running and we need our batteries to charge that our inverter is turned on here. If our inverter is off, we're not going to get battery charging and our appliances in our kitchen are not going to operate. Just to the right of that, we have our water heating system, our Truma Aqua Go. Currently, it's set to off. To turn it on, we would just go to one of the settings here at the top. The top one, the icon is showing the temperature setting one and two. Uh, the settings at the very bottom are for cleaning. Just refer to your owner's manual for the uh, cleaning that's done um, yearly. So you don't want to go into the cleaning mode and then back into operating mode because there's a couple hour delay. So only go into the cleaning mode when you're ready to clean the system out. There's a WineGuard satellite system switch on and off. Just below that you have your block heater or preheat so you can preheat your engine on cold start days. You don't want to start your engine on uh, if it's really cold outside before you turn your block heater on. Let your block heater run for a good half hour before you start your engine. Just to the left of that is our awning control for our main patio carefree awning. The switch on the left turns it on and then the switch on the right retracts and extends. So we have to have it on for it to retract or extend. Turning it off, uh, then it's just dormant. Just to the left of that is our television over the air antenna control. If we turn it on, you can see it scans for channels automatically. If we have the over the air antenna turned on here and illuminated, it will show the number of channels it's found. We can make slight adjustments left or right 
that these buttons here, if the over the air antenna is on, that means you won't be able to view the cable network that you might plug into for the cable channels. You have to have this off if you want to view cable. So just keep that in mind. Over the air, you have this turned on, but if you're going to watch cable, let's say you have cable connections at your park, then you want to make sure this is off to view cable. Just to the left of the wine guard antenna is our step. You can hear I can override the step just by pressing this button. What that does is it keeps the exterior step at the door open whether or not the door is open or closed. So you might want to just leave the step override switch on if you're getting in and out of the coach often because otherwise the door, every time you open the door, the steps go out. When you close the door, the steps come in. The last switch that we'll talk about is your battery disconnect. This is for your house batteries, not chassis. These are your batteries that operate the lightings and functions in your coach. If you turn this switch off, the red light will go out and the lights will go out in the coach. Then you would have to turn your light switch back on when you turn this back on. So when you initially come into your coach to get things to turn on and operate, you have to press this to on and this light will need to illuminate and then you'll be able to operate your 12 volt controls in the coach. When you're going to store your coach for a certain length of time, you would turn this off, just press it once, it would go out, and that would be saving your house batteries uh, for extended storage periods of more than a few days. Just above our step switch here is our slide out switch. The slide out is a 12 volt operated motor that moves the slide room in and out. If I want to move the slide room out, I would rock the rocker switch to the out or down position. Moving it to the in position would retract the slide out if I want to move the slide room in or store it. Refer to your owner's manual because you don't want to operate this switch until you've checked your reveals. We'll show you how to do that outside when we're looking at the um, Z trim and the fascia trim. We want to make sure there's clearance so that when the slide moves, uh, we have good clearance and there's nothing in the way of the slide room. So before you extend or put your slide room out, you want to make sure to go outside and look sure, make sure there's nothing in the way of the slide room movement. And the slide room is typically extended before you put your equalizer jacks down. Uh, we want to do it that way because the coach needs to be uh, on an air ride suspension before the slide is extended out to the out position. And then after it's extended out, when you would operate the jacks, then the jacks would be holding the coach in the level position and the airbags would be deflated. So when you look at your ceiling, you'll notice there are sets of louvers here. There's louvers with filters on the passenger side and there's louvers here without filters on the driver's side. So the discharge air that's coming from the air conditioners or the rooftop heat pump air conditioners, uh, they heat and cool. The air comes down here. The air that's coming down goes back up through the filter into the air conditioner and then back around. So all of the air is filtered here going through these filters. So you wanna keep these filters clean to clean the filter, you can um, use compressed air to blow the dust off, and then you'd want to wash the filter in warm soapy water and then rinse it and squeeze out the, the uh, water and then let it air dry. After it's air dried and clean, 
and we put it back in place and then put our our louvers back up. Now there is an additional filter in this assembly here. You'll notice there's four screws here and a filter and another four screws here and a filter. So these two filters need to be removed by taking out those four screws and then cleaned and then put back in place. And those should be done at the same time these are done and the ones in the bedroom area. They all need to be cleaned um, every month or two uh, to make sure that you have good circulation of air coming from your rooftop air conditioners. Just to the center of the kitchen area, you have a smoke detector. The smoke detector um, has an LED light that illuminates every so many seconds, but to test this so that you're making sure that it's operating, if you press and hold the center uh, button right here, you'll, you'll hear the tone, and that tells you that your system is working, and when you see the LED light flash every five seconds or so, that tells you the batteries are good. So looking for the LED light flash and pressing and holding that button down for a few seconds is gonna give the audible alarm. That tells your batteries are up. Now, if you don't get the light, LED light and or the sound, you should squeeze it and just pull down. There is a battery nine volt that you can take out and replace. So replace the battery if you don't have light warning and sound warning, then do the test again. As long as you get the sound and light, you're okay. If you still don't get it with a new fresh battery, then you need to replace the smoke detector. As you come in the entrance of your coach, you'll see a touch control panel, which is your KIB control panel. This shows you what is going on in your coach and you have complete control of your coach here with this touch panel. So as soon as you touch it, it will illuminate. And then you'll see the options for you to control at the bottom. So I can go to my home screen. My AGS screen is my automatic generator starter screen. The HVAC screen is my heating, ventilation, and air conditioning screen. And of course, my light lighting screen. So starting at the left, my home screen shows me my tank levels here and my battery levels, house battery and chassis batteries here. Whenever I press a button, like say water pump, you'll see that it turns a red color. That means it's on. So any of the ones that are in gray are off. If I press it again, it goes gray, so that's off. Tank heat, same way. If I press it, that's on. Gray is off. Once I get levels of fresh water, gray or black, in any one of my tanks, those will start to go up and they'll be blue. Since I have an LP tank, it's the same way. The LP tank uh, will show the level here. Living room kitchen lighting, so I can turn all lights on here, all lights off here. AGS screen is here. I can set the generator to come on and start so that if my batteries are going low, let's say I'm not plugged into shore power, then I would want to set up my AGS for runtime. So refer to your owner's manual for the AGS operations, but um, you want to make sure that your AGS is on, especially if you're dry camping, because the generator will start automatically. That's what it's. That's what the name is, AGS, Automatic Generator Starter. If you go to your HVAC screen, you'll see I can control my heating and air conditioning. So whenever those modes are on, it shows the mode that's on, cool mode, auto mode heat pump mode, furnace mode.
fan mode or off. If I want to make the fans come on all the time, I can go to a low fan in the living room. If I want the low fan speed to be on on the air conditioner in the bedroom, then I would turn that to low fan on the bedroom. If I go medium or high, it will go to those settings or just auto will come on only with the compressor when it goes into heat pump or cool mode. Setting the temperatures is easy. I can see what temperature it already is inside, but if I want to adjust those temperatures, I just go up or down here. As long as I've selected a mode, that function will come on. So my air conditioners will come on now in the bedroom zone. Heat pump, of course, only the heat pump will come on then. Fan only or cool. If I leave it in the auto mode, the nice thing about auto mode is it selects furnace, heat pump, or cool for the temperature you set. So if I set 71 and I leave it in auto for the bedroom or living room, that will automatically stay at that temperature and will adjust to cool or heat pump or furnace by itself. So it's nice to use. I like the auto mode because in the auto mode, whatever temperature I set, it will turn on the furnace or it will turn on the heat pump. It typically turns the heat pump on if you're plugged in before it turns the furnace on. But you can override that and turn on whichever one you like just by selecting that mode. There's ECO. ECO saves a little bit of uh, the um, electricity or uh, fuel that you might burn in your furnace by just bumping that temperature down about five degrees. So if you're going to leave the coach and you want to save a little bit on your, um, your environmental costs, uh, hitting the ECO button does that. Obviously, you can set up, run, enable program times uh, in more detail, just refer to your owner's manual to do that here. Uh, moving on to the lighting screen, we touched a little bit about that, but I can go to any one of these locations and I can turn my lights on and off. Again, you can set the time, you can set the date. Um, all these settings uh, can be, you know, looked at and changed uh, from those setting screens. So if we need to change our time or day, we need to go to the HVAC screen here and then go to setup, set time. So here we've got our day and time settings we can change here. And then when we're finished, we can just go back to our home screen. So we're in our dinette and we're going to go over the cabinets and the operation of the dream dinette. If we open this cabinet, we'll see we've got our connections for our satellite on the back with 120 volt outlets. The uh, HDMI cables are labeled source, Blu-ray and satellite. And of course, that's where you'd put your satellite receiver and plug it in and make your connection to your satellite. This is your Bose sound bar. It has a remote. This is our cabinet and our connections for our other AV TV operations here. You can see a small louvered plastic cover. That's our sensor for our room temperature. More storage here. And of course our lighting controls, additional GFC outlets with USB charging ports. To fold this dinette into a bed, there's a lever that you release here at the base. Once you turn that clockwise or down, then you need to remove the cushions.
and then you just push the table down. It sits into place, then you can put your cushions back. And then our center cushion, which is in the back bedroom, just bring it up and then slip it in place. And then removing it and putting it back into the dinette the same way, just remove the center cushion. Have to move these out of the way to lift the table back up. Lift the table up, lock it back in position. and you're ready for travel. With your television, you'll have a remote control. Before you watch the television over the air or cable, you'll have to scan for those channels. And we talked a little bit earlier about leaving the television antenna turned on to make the scan. So in the overhead above the door, you have to turn your WineGuard uh, receiver on and then you'll get the, the uh, LEDs around it showing that it's on. Then you would turn your TV on to scan for channels. So to scan for a channel, you'd want to come over here to your three um, bars and go to setting. Then press the center button and then scroll all the way to the right until you see all settings here. Then press it again. And now you get the selection here for broadcasting and that's what you want to choose. So you go down, use your down arrow and then press the center button to choose it. And you want to go into auto program. So again, center button to choose the auto program. And now you want to hit the start because you want to search and store channels. So pressing the center button again to start. And it's going to ask you which channels do you want to scan. And regardless of watching air or cable, you're going to have to scan for channels. So you can do air or cable, or you can do both. In this case, we're just going to do the air channels. So we're going to choose air by the center button again, and it goes through a scanning process and it will tell us how many channels it finds. Now we're in a, we're inside of a building. So the, the, the scan is probably not going to show, um, too many channels. All right. No channels were found, obviously, because we're in the building. Now, if this would happen outside, you could, should, you would have to scan again. Um, when we're done scanning, we have our channel scanned. We can go back to the home page and we can view live TV. Obviously, if we would have got any channels that would scan, we would see them now. Um, if we go to source, by moving over one arrow, 
we can choose the source that we want to watch. Obviously, we're on TV now. But if we wanted to watch any of the other Blu-ray or those others, we could watch by moving the arrow over to that selection and then pressing the center selection button. Currently, there are no Blu-ray uh, receivers uh, installed in the coach, but if you had those, then you could watch those items. So again, if you want to scan for cable, you have to turn the over-the-air WineGuard receiver off, and then you would scan for your cable channels to watch cable if you had part cable available. That part cable plug is outside, and I'll show you where that is a little bit later. But that has to be plugged in for you to watch cable, unless you're watching one of these other uh, selections here. So we'll turn the TV off and we'll move on to the next area. So we've moved back into the kitchen area and we'll start with the overhead cabinets. Inside the cabinets you'll notice that we've labeled uh, certain notices and warnings but we've included all of the coach information, VIN number, and gross vehicle weight information along with paint codes. This is your coach information packet, warranty registration. All of the files in this case um, will help you understand your coach and the paperwork that's in here will help you get the warranty registration filed. So make, make sure that you go through here, fill out your warranty registration cards and mail those in. Um, all of your service bulletins are in here along with your uh, owner's operator's manual. In addition to the black manual paperwork is an additional one here with all of the Freightliner, owner's warranty, and ch chassis operator's information, along with your Owner's manual from Cummins. There's a hubcap wrench here with your chassis information. We'll show you how to use that. But these information packets um, come with every new Mark coach. So be sure and go through your warranty and registration information here. Up in this cabinet, you'll notice a cord, 120 volt outlet here. This needs to be plugged in to operate your microwave. Our sink has removable covers. Those can be stored over here. The microwave handle is here. Numar installs an additional locking mechanism to keep the door closed during travel. So you'll notice that you'll, you'll need to push it to close and that will keep it closed during travel. These two removable covers have a cutting board on the back side. So they serve two purposes, two functions. There's a cutting board on each one. This is your true induction range. The um, pans that you would use here have to be magnetic. Once you put the magnetic pan on the surface on either side, you will turn it on here for the power. And then you make your adjustments here. If the pan is not magnetic, it won't sense there's a pan there, and this will automatically just shut off. To, to remove there, and then you can see it did shut off. So to remove this and use it outside, just grab a hold of each side, lift up, and you'll be able to unplug it right here and take it outside. So you can do cooking outside or inside, your choice. And 
just reinsert it back in place and then put our cutting boards back on here. Yeah, you want to make sure that your stove top range is cool before you put these back in place. There is additional drawer space down below here. When you get your coach, your extra set of keys, remotes, and house filter wrench, um, the remote for the rear curtain in the toy hauler area is here. We'll go over that later. There's a mounting bracket here for the passenger seat. Uh, this inserts into the armrest on the right side of the passenger seat so that you can um, mount a iPad or other electronic device here and that holds it in place and you can turn it and make the adjustments here. Uh, Numar also includes your touch-up paint um, for each color um, in your paint scheme. So in case you need a little touch-up, you've got that here. Those are our covers, sink covers, more drawer space here. And then over here is just a small storage space in the front of the sink and then a larger one here with your trash receptacle. And oh, there's a window here. It has uh, dual crank openings for fresh air with screens on both sides. On the bottom side of your microwave uh, is where you would insert the screens that come with that. Those are included here. So the stainless steel refrigerator is a whirlpool. You'll notice here there's a black slider. This is a door lock that Numar installs to keep the refrigerator doors from opening when you're in transit. So I can open the door now, but if I slide that to the left, that's going to lock the door. So if I move that left, now I can't open either door or close. Unlocking it, slide right. Now I can open my door. Just remember, always lock the slider before you travel to keep the doors from opening uh, and might lose food or whatever while you're in motion. There's an ice maker here at the top, a freezer control knob at the back. And in the bottom, you've got your model serial number information and your touchpad control for temperature down below. This is uh, an electric refrigerator. Uh, it's not gas. We have our pantry here our pantry cabinet doors. Just below those, we have our vacuum. Down is off, so you can sweep um, the floor here, lift it up, sweep in. That goes down into a receptacle in the baggage area. If you don't want to sweep, you want to use the accessories that come with the intervac system, then those would be plugged in here. If you'd rather use the accessories to sweep the floor than a broom, which would be here, we have the intervac accessory bag that's in the baggage compartment area. Those accessories are all here.
the hose would be inserted here. There is a warning here that you know tells you you should have the dust or filter bag in the vacuum before you insert it. The same warning tag is here. So that would need to be removed first. So you want to remove your warning tag here. And then you would want to plug your hose in here. And then the on off is control right here at the handle. And of course your accessories would go here. Once you depress this on off switch, the LED light will come on and you can hear uh, the vacuum is on now. So then you can go ahead and sweep to turn it off. Same thing, just press once and it turns off. If the LED light does not come on when you depress the switch, there is a uh, battery underneath here that needs to be changed if that would happen. If you need more instructions on how this operates, you can scan this QR code and go online to learn more about your system or just refer to your owner's manual in the black bag. When you're storing uh, the hose, since that is the on-off switch, you want to make sure that it's stored so that uh, nothing's going to bump up against that um, and turn it on inadvertently. We're moving into the half bath here. And as we go in, we see a shower sink and our toilet. So let's move over into the shower area here. You can see that you can make the adjustment to either the handheld or the shower. This is our hot and cold adjustment on and off. It has a fold down seat if you'd like to sit down and shower. You'll notice that the door is a slider, but it has a lock. So just make sure before you travel that that lock is engaged or down so that door does not slide while you're traveling. So that would be for showering. And when you're finished, just close this all the way and then lock it. There's a skylight here above there's a discharge and you have your fantastic vent here. Uh, this fantastic vent operates just like the one in the kitchen. There's a wall switch here. The wall switch has the on off the same as it did for the kitchen. This is on and off. There's on and as the lid goes up, you can hear the fan come on. You can adjust the speed here. And uh, if there is moisture in the air to the point where the rain sensor might not allow that to come on, again, disabling the rain sensor is easy. Just hold the down button for three seconds and the rain sensor LED light will come on red. And then the rain sensor is disabled and you'll be able to operate the fan like this. If you want to turn it off manually, you can, or you can turn it on manually just by cranking the black knob here. So I can actually, even when it's on, I can close it and turn it off manually. Um, again, I would want to do that at, at the control um, as long as it's working. So now you can see the fan and the lid are both down and off. There is a small black removable cover. That is the fuse for the fan. When that's inserted, you'll see a red LED light come on telling you that you have power. If you'll notice, there's a red LED glow there. <clears throat> as long as you see that red LED glow, you know your fuse is good and powered up and there's power to the fan. You have your medicine cabinet and storage here. Just to the right and below, we've got our 
120 volt outlet here. It is GFCI protected. If the GFCI trips, this one is resettable. Uh, if it trips, that light will go out. So there's no power here now or on any of the other GFCI circuits in the coach. So if you're not getting power in the kitchen or another outlet that's GFCI protected, this one might be tripped or another. You want to make sure to go to that outlet and reset by depressing that top button so the green light comes on, then you know it's working again. There's more cabinet space on the other side here. This cabinet contains our 120 volt and 12 volt breakers and fuses, uh, also our resettable fuses. If for any reason you have an appliance that stops working, you can check here for if it's a 12 volt appliance or feature function. Those labels F1, F2 going all the way down to F26 are labeled here. So if let's say your awning quit working, that is an F6. So then I would go here to F6 and check my awning fuse. If it was blown, I have spare fuses up here. I would get a fuse that's the same size and reinsert it, throwing the old fuse away, and then that function for the awning should begin working again. So all of the appliance functions are labeled here for our 12 volt system. If it's a 120 volt appliance and for any reason that appliance may not work or it's not coming on, you'd want to come over here and check that label for that product. Let's say it's the microwave. Here's the microwave breaker. To the left is off, to the right is on. So you can see here our refrigerator is turned off. I'd want, if my refrigerator wasn't coming on, I'd check this. If it was off, I'd turn it back on. Now, whenever these might trip for some reason, they don't trip all the way over to the left. They typically trip and they're only slightly over, maybe towards the center. To reset that, I need to manually push it all the way to the left and then back to the right to reset it. So just keep that in mind. If you see one that's tripped, it's only going to be about there. You have to go all the way to the left and then back to the right to reset it to turn it on. All of our 120 volt uh, breakers are here. Engine block, air conditioners, inverters, cooktop, um, microwaves, refrigerators are all in this area. This is our main breaker. Here's our main to the pole. So if our main breakers are off, none of these are going to come on. Okay. These breakers actually are for the power that you're going to get through the inverter circuits in the kitchen, like your microwave and refrigerator. So as long as your inverter is turned on, this sub panel, it's labeled here, sub panel, these breakers here, these will operate and work as long as the inverter is on. These work in the, in the upper half always when your generator's on or you're plugged into shore power. So close that when you're finished. This is the Dometic toilet. This is not the macerating one, but this flushes just simply by depressing the foot pedal here. And of course we have the light switches here on the wall panel for our vanity. We can turn our water pump on here, backlighting high and low and ceiling. Moving into the bedroom area, we have our sliding pocket door. To release the door and go in the closed position for the bedroom, we have to push down to unlock, and then we have to move it over. As soon as this lines up 
here in the front, it will automatically relock in the closed position. You can see it locked. So now I can't open the door unless I push back down to unlock and then open the door the other way. Now when it travels all the way to closed position there, you'll see it relock. So now it's locked there and it won't slide this way. So if you're traveling, you wanna make sure this door is locked before you travel so it doesn't slide back and forth. At the nightstand, you'll see that we have a 120 volt outlet and USB storage space below. Overhead storage here. There is a 120 volt outlet in the back wall there. You'll notice uh, the two panels here uh, in the overhead are illuminated. These control the lighting circuits and they're labeled ceiling, courtesy, um, high and low backlighting and accent lighting there. The shades on both windows on either side are manual and they have a window that's a slider window so you can you can open and close that window here and then lock the bed base lifts up you can lift that up and you can see we have additional storage below uh, the hole in the panel is so you can lift the panel out to access uh, the motor and electrical operating components underneath uh, those two panels. The nightstand on this side of the bed is the same as that one. It has the 120 volt outlet and USB plug in. Here you have your temperature control for the rear zone and your speaker controls for the two speakers on the ceiling. If you're in house mode and you want to hear that, what's playing on the radio in the back here in the bedroom, just turn these speakers on or off, or you can have one or the other on it. You can choose if you want one or two. Above, we have the same type of filtration for our air conditioning and heat pump. You wanna make sure and have those removed the same way. Keep these filters clean, and then after they're clean, just put them back in place. Those louvers lock. You shouldn't really need to do anything with the ones on the driver's side. That's just your discharge cool air and or discharge warm air, depending on what mode you have the air conditioner and heat pump or cool. In the center of the room, we have our CO2 detector. You can test it similar to the smoke detector in the front of the coach. Just press and hold the center button and you get the warning sound and you get the, the LED light flashes. That tells you that your battery's good and that it would sound in an alarm for CO2. If you don't get the sound or the light, just slightly squeeze it, pull down, and replace the 9-volt battery. After you replace the 9-volt battery, do the same test to make sure the sound and the LED light are working. We have our wardrobe space here. There is a large decal um, that we put in this cabinet area with all of the model and serial numbers of all of the appliances in the coach. So if you ever have a, uh, an appliance that needs to be replaced or was replaced, you're not sure what model you need, come back here. The model and serial number of the original appliance is here. There's an additional outlet there that's plugged in over here to our television. Just below the TV, we have a cabinet here that's another AV or audiovisual cabinet where we could put our satellite receiver and our satellite hookup is here. 
along with 120 volt outlet for the receiver in that compartment. More drawer space here and below. And on the wall, we have our lighting control, again, for ceiling, dresser, accent, high and low. And we have our slide out control in and out for the bedroom slide. We wanna make sure before we operate this to read the warning labels, not allow children to use it, and make sure before we run the slide rooms in either direction that there's nothing on the floor or on the outside of the coach that would be in the way uh, for that operation. These are not a momentary switch. You have to hold the position of the switch out until it's all the way extended or in until it's all the way retracted. There is an egress window here in case of an emergency where you would have to exit the coach and the directions on operating or opening this window are here. The pull handles are on the, here, they're labeled red. Again, just opening these on both sides, then pushing the window out is the way you would exit. You can relatch both of them here. There's no screen here. So we're at the front of the coach and before you travel, you should always check your lights. So we're gonna go through the light pattern at the front and we'll do the same at the rear. So right now you can see he's got his marker lights on and he's gonna go ahead and turn his headlights on. Uh, he's got his dim, now he's gonna go to bright and back to dim. And now he's going to use his turn signals. Um, you can see that his fog lights came on. So he's going to turn those off. When you go to bright, your fog lights will turn out. So if your brights are on, your fog lights go off. So he'll check his turn signals, left and right. And both are working. So we've got our headlights, turn signals, fog lights, and marker lights all working. So we're in good shape. So uh, we'll turn those off. Oh, those are your hazard lights. And uh, that should be our last check on lights. So we can turn our lights off. And we're gonna take a quick look under the hood here. We've already uh, hit our latch for the hood. Uh, there's a pull latch that we talked about earlier. Once you pull the latch inside by the driver's seat, then we can open this, just lift up. There's a prop rod here. Put your prop rod in place. And now you can take a look at your fuel, your levels for your power steering fluid are here. Wiper washer fluid here. Um, this is of course your radiator or your radiators. Um, for your engine and uh, transmission. Um, also your, your HVAC system for your air conditioning. Up here, you've got your transmission oil fill and dipstick, your dipstick for your oil and oil fill. Engine coolant level, never uh, take this cap off with, when the engine's warm. If you need to fill this, wait till the engine's cool. We have our evaporator line for uh, charging or discharging the air conditioning system. And we have our filter indicator. As long as the engine's running, we're gonna see a diaphragm, a yellow diaphragm that moves up and down. And as long as the filter for the engine air is good, it stays in the green. But if the yellow diaphragm would move up and get into the red, then you would want to change your air filter for the engine. Over on the far side over here on the passenger side is your air conditioning and heating uh, system. And just below that, you've got your plug uh, for your 120 volt block heater. 
So that needs to be plugged in if you want your block heat to be turned on. When you're finished in this compartment, just lift up slightly here, move the prop rod back into the lock, push up and it locks, and then you can just let it close. Starting at the front on the passenger side of the coach, um, we wanna talk a little bit about mirror adjustments. If you need to adjust the mirror more than what the electric motor adjustment gives you, you can loosen these two Allen head screws and you can adjust that mirror in any direction. Um, that will give you more of a range. Then you need to retighten those uh, back in place. Both mirrors have the same adjustments. Just below that, you've got your flagpole insert. You just take it out and then insert that and you've got your flagpole um, that you can insert. Here is your camera for the passenger side. The exact same camera is on the driver's side so that when you select this camera, you can view this whole side of the coach going towards the back, not the front. And that automatically turns to the camera that your turn signal is adjusted for. So if I turn right, this camera will come on for this view. If I turn left or left turn signal, the driver's camera will come on for that side. So there is one more camera that's in the back of the coach and we'll show you that in a minute. Uh, for your tire, you wanna make sure that your pressure is uh, correct. That can be uh, tested here, just loosen the cap. You can check your pressures manually right here. So the awning uh, mounted at the top edge of the wrap has a remote. Uh, so you can operate it outside of the coach or you can go inside and do it manually. Um, to operate it outside here, there's a little cover that you can slide down on the remote and you have in and out. So just there's a little LED that will display. Uh, keep in mind that if your ignition key is turned on, your remote will not work. So key has to be off in the ignition and then you'll be able to press the B uh, to extend your patio awning. If you want to stop the awning at any point, just pressing it again. So I press the B again, it stops. If I want to continue on after that, just press that B again, and it will go the rest of the way out. When I want to retract it, that would be the A. So just pressing the A button, it'll retract. I can stop any time along the way, just press the A again, and it stops. Press it again to go all the way in. We're at the end of the awning, and you'll notice there's a sensor here at the end. And what that is, is if there's a lot of motion from wind, this will sense that motion and turns the retract on for the motor so that the awning stows and doesn't stay out when, when it's a windy day. So uh, just to simulate that, I'll go ahead and grab the end of the awning and move it. And the shake sensor will know that there's uh, simulated wind and should retract the awning. So you can see just that motion there and the awning is gonna retract automatically. So if you, were, if you weren't around and the wind kicked up and the awning started to move, it would automatically retract. They don't recommend that you leave your awning out in windy conditions or rain, uh, because the rain, even though it, most of it will come off, makes the fabric heavier, and in a downpour, it may be too much weight, and then it would not hold up uh, with the arms. So if it's gonna rain, or it's gonna be really windy, uh, it's best to just retract your awning. So moving back, uh, our first door back is our LP compartment. Uh, the LP compartment is not fully enclosed because uh, it needs to have air circulation uh, in that compartment. So um, there is a gauge indicator here um, for the level of fuel. 
This is the on and off valve. So in the event that you would smell any LP in this area, uh, you definitely want to close that by turning it clockwise. Open is on, cl clockwise is closed. So um, if you're not using the tank and you're going to store the coach, I would recommend that you close that clockwise all the way. In our next compartment, we have the entertainment center. The uh, inverter is located here, your coach inverter. That also charges your battery. Our, our fuse panel is located here. All the labels for the fuses, entrance step, radio, and others are labeled here. So if you have any of those um, that aren't working, you'd want to remove this panel by turning those small levers until you can remove this panel. And you can see here all the fuses and uh, mini breakers are labeled. So the resettable one is here labeled B, B1 through five. Uh, those breakers are the ones that are silver colored and those can be reset rather than replaced. If you need to replace those, uh, any of the fuses, the smaller ones, you have to pull the one out that's not working, check it, and then replace it. In addition to those fuses, there are a couple more here, uh, chassis voltage, five amp, and solar panel that's located here. Uh, you'll notice in this panel, there are two solenoids. The one on the left is your house battery disconnect and reconnect. And the one on the right is the charge solenoid, which connects your chassis batteries to your house batteries in case one bank or the other needs to be charged or if you need the battery boost. When you're, when you're done servicing this area, you'd want to put this back, just put it in place and move these small levers to lock. So there is an, ex, uh, uh, an exterior light here on and off. This rubber release handle pin, this rubber release handle uh, will release the television uh, for your outside entertainment center. So be careful when you lift this up and release, you're gonna move the TV out and then down. Uh, for your inter outside entertainment. Just above the television, you have another control panel here and it is Bluetooth um, for your radio, uh, your infinity radio. So you can see I've turned that on. Here's your volume control on and off. So you can play your radio out here or by turning the house mode on, you can uh, get that sound out here. This is your TV and that, of course, that's controlled with the remote control from inside. There's an additional plug here for USB. When you're finished with the television, just grab a hold of the bottom, lift up and push back in. Make sure that you lock the rubber handle. Our steps are out and they'll stay out because I've turned on my step override switch. If the step override switch is off, then when I close the door, the steps will close with the door and open, the steps will open. So your coach has a deadbolt and it has a regular door lock for the handle. So if I want to operate the deadbolt to lock from the inside, that's done with this handle, the red one here, to lock with the deadbolt. If I want to unlock it manually, then I have to insert the key. So to operate the deadbolt, it's uh, this key. This one would be for both locks, and for the rear door, it would be this key. So the purple key will operate 
manually your deadbolt from the outside or the door lock from the outside. To lock the door with the, hand, the handle lock, we can do it right here or unlock from the inside. To open or close the screen door, there's a magnet holding the door here. So just pull to release. We can close the door here and then we can lock it there. So the door, when it's closed, has two latches. The first latch is just for soft close. And you could latch it in the first latch if you didn't want to close it all the way for travel. If you're going to travel, you want to make sure to close the door more firmly so it goes in the second latch and stays flush. That way you're not going to have air noise as you travel. But if you want to just latch it in the first latch, that's the first latch if you're parked and you don't want to slam the door. We do have an outside speaker here at this door and at the other door. Now this is your water storage tank. This is your control for your um, bedroom slide room. Just beside the freshwater tank is a valve here that you can turn on and off to drain the low point for your freshwater tank. This is open and that would be closed. This is your LP furnace for heating in the coach. It's a Suburban. This area is for intake air for combustion and exhaust air. So this air is labeled hot so you definitely don't want to get close or have things close to this or touch it while it's burning. That's very hot and you will get burned. That's another marker light here. In this compartment, we have a 120 volt plug. We have another tank here. This would be your gray and black tank area. This is your intervac system and of course um, your interior light. So in the next compartment back, we have our intervac accessory bag, which we looked at earlier. This plug is for the tank heaters, the tank heat pads uh, to keep your uh, tanks from getting too cold in the wintertime. Uh, they're connected to the box here in the relays. On the opposite side, the back here, you've got your light and uh, you'll notice a circuit board here. Uh, that is the control board for your touch panel inside by the door for your HVAC and all your other systems. Uh, that's the control pad for it. In this compartment and this rear one are just storage areas. and another speaker here by this door. There's a magnetic switch so that when you open this door, this magnet releases here and the steps come out. This door operates and locks in the same way with the deadbolt or the door handle, the same as the front door. That locks the screen door. And now we just close our door here. There are two latches for this door that's in the first latch now. To make it into the second, you have to close a little more firmly. And now we're in the second latch on the rear door. Or security light or porch light. This is a vent. Uh, the vent that goes to the inside, this vent can be opened 
from the inside. Uh, if more ventilation is needed for any of the items that you're carrying uh, in the toy haul hauler area. So if you need to keep that ventilated, this opens up so that you have air movement in that compartment. We have another marker light here. Um, and then we're gonna show you now how the lights should be working in the rear of the coach. At the top center, you've got your camera. So we'll demonstrate these lights, brake lights, turn signals, and marker lights now. Okay, so we're gonna demonstrate the rear lights and how they should look. And you wanna check your lights uh, front and rear before you travel, make sure they're all working. So he's gonna demonstrate the docking lights first, the two just beside the camera in the top center. So those are your docking lights. The docking light switch for those upper two lights beside the camera are just inside the rear door on the wall. Now he's gonna go and operate the other lights from the dash area uh, and the reverse, uh, so you can see all the LEDs light up. Those are your brake lights. Those are your uh, running lights. Turn signal left and right. Emergency or hazard flashers. So he started the engine, he's got his foot on the brake and those are your rear view, rear lights, backup lights. And off. So to hook up your lights to your tow vehicle, uh, you've got your plug here, obviously your towing hitch, and reflective markers down at the base, and your exterior lights for your license plate. So to unlock the toy hauler rear compartment, there's a lever up here. So if I go up above the lever, there's uh, at my index finger, there's a little lever that I pull down to unlock the main lever. Then I pull that lever down to unlock the entire compartment. So now you can see that the compartment's unlocked and all I need to do is pull it down. It's, it's balanced so it's easy enough to pull down. And then I'll flip the ramp down. In the interior right now, we've got the table and the bed lift, which folds out into a dining room area or setting, uh, this can be removed. Uh, there's three legs uh, that come out of the floor. So we can take this table out, remove the legs, and then we can fold this back into a bed um, or just lift it up out of the way. So we're gonna show you how to do that now. So these are installed with uh, three locking pins. So you just turn it until it goes in, turn it to lock, and then tighten it here. So just the reverse of that. Now the leg is tight. So to unlock your legs, you just rotate counterclockwise, then you can unlock and remove. All three legs are the same. After you put the leg, or I take the leg out, you want to put these caps back on, and that covers the whole opening. So if you're going to use this as a sofa, you'd want to use the support leg. So moving that support leg down to the center, there's an unlock pin on the back. So just press the unlock pin and rotate it down. Then when it's in the center, you'll hear it lock back into place. So there you're locked. And now you have the extra support uh, for when you're using it as a dining table or sofa. Um, or if you use it as a bed, when it's folded out this way, you can see the locking mechanism is here. So you press that 
open it up and you can see it locks back in to that hole. So now you're locked in place. Now you can use it as a bed. You'll need to do both sides the same. When you want to fold this back up, just unlock that and it will lock back into place here. So that's set up as a couch now. Uh, to lock this back up, just press on the tab back here. In this spot here, press on that. It'll unlock and then just fold it up and you can hear it click and lock back into place there. You've got two sets of bunks or beds here. Uh, if you want to just lower the one, you would leave the four pins in, which are here. All right, so I want to leave those in if I just want to lower one, uh, the lower one down, and that switch is right here on the wall. So then I would just lower this down. But if I want to lower both of the bunks, then I want to pull all these four pins out of each one of the rails. So that's a rail. Pull that pin. Pull this one. And the other two on the other side. So now I've got all four pins pulled. I can come over here to my wall lever and I can bring both beds down now. So the micro switch for the top bunk stopped the upper bunk, but the lower one will continue on down. So now both the upper and the lower bunks are ready uh, for sleeping. What you can do now is take the ladder and set your ladder up for the upper bunk here. So now you have access to the upper bunk and the lower bunk. Again, we talked about it a little earlier, but before you put weight on the lower bunk, you want to lower these two arms down to support that weight. Uh, whether you're folding it into a bed or if you're folding it into a sofa, then you just want to lower this leg down to support people that might be using it as a sofa or uh, a dining table and sofa. So the reverse of that to store it would be the same. You would lower these down to the center and remove the ladder. So you can store your ladder, uh, the three legs and the table on the top bunk, and then you're ready to stow the bunks. Press up. The bottom bunk meets the top and then they both go up and then you'll have to put your four pins in to lock them in place. Okay, now we take our locking pins since we're all the way up. 
So in the back here is an extra uh, 120 volt outlet. Both windows have a window covering. This is an escape window, egress window. So in case you would have an emergency and need to escape, this is, this is the window you'd want to go out of. Just release the red handles up and go out this way. Both of the other windows on either side have a crank uh, and screen to open and close, just like the windows in the front. Just open and close here for ventilation. Same with this window over here. If you need additional uh, ventilation by not opening a window, this is the vent that you can open for air to come in without opening a window. It opens either way, front or back, and that allows airflow in this compartment. It has another one just like that up here. So open, close, or open, closed. Another 120 volt outlet here. There is a dryer vent here. If you install the dryer in this area, there are smoke detectors on both sides of the ceiling here. Um, they test the same way as the one in the front. Press and hold the center. You'll hear the tone. You can also see the LED light. If you don't see the LED light or hear the tone, pull that cover down and replace the nine volt battery. Um, the speakers here in the back are integrated into the sound system. And of course the a uh, fantastic vent can be opened manually with the black bar. Um, it is turning on and off here with the wall switch, just on and off the same way as the one in the bathroom. We have uh, the patio light here. There is a fuel pump here. Uh, the fuel pump is for the auxiliary fuel tank. Uh, dinette lighting, exterior lighting, and step lighting. Door locks are the same as the front door. There's an independent thermostat for this rear area compartment of the toy hauler. So you'd need to turn this on and then you will be able to uh, go to mode and then you can choose uh, to turn on the air conditioner uh, in this rear zone. This is the temperature sensor for the rear zone. And of course, this is the lighting control in this compartment. Just above that, we have a cabinet for storage, a rear radio for playing with these speakers, television with remote in the kitchen. The remote is there. And our lighting control for the entire coach is here that works in conjunction with our wall switches so we can turn lights on and off from different locations uh, and that's the junction box for those controls we have more storage here and of course our fire extinguisher if needed there is a manual light switch here we can turn on and off and our door to the front of the coach. So the, for your tie down straps for stabilizing your cargo in this area or your motorcycles, ATVs, whatever, these are your tie downs and they can be moved to any one of these locations forward and back. You just have to lift up and turn slightly and then slide it to unlock. And then you can put it into any location you like. Just put it into that location, push down, turn it slightly, move it into place, and now you're locked in that spot. Again, basically just lift, turn, slide, and move it where you want. You have a remote control for the screen on the back 
uh, up and down. Just press once and the screen will go all the way down. You can stop it at any point and then continue on or go back up. So that's fully extended. Then we can re just retract with one press. And stowing it is the same, just flip the ramp up and lift up. And then the lever back to lock. You can hear it latch. And now we're locked back in place. Moving forward um, from the rear of the coach on the driver's side, our first compartment is a cord compartment. The, in that cord compartment, You've got the automatic transfer switch, and you'll see a gray cord coming from the generator and the black cord from the shore compartment. So when the generator is running and on, the transfer switch connects to the generator and gives you power in the coach. If your generator is not on, the transfer switch will come over here and connect to the shoreline power. Here's the park cable we talked about. If you plug this in to a cable uh, connection, um, you'll have cable available in your coach as long as you turn off the wine guard antenna. And the next compartment is your fuel. The switch on the wall that we just looked at has to be turned on in order for this to work uh, and fill uh, fuel into your vehicle or your motorcycle, ATVs, whatever you're hauling. More storage in this compartment. This is a small compartment for your hoses, um, for your water compartment and drain, for sewage drain or gray tank drain. This is the compartment for your diesel fuel. Just twist and remove. This is the water bay compartment. You notice we left a filter wrench here. In this compartment, you have your drain. Your drains here for your tanks. So, and they're labeled. The wastewater holding tank, the sewage tank is over there. This is your wastewater. And you'll see that there's actually one here and one here. So this is the valve that you need to open for the forward drain. This is the one for the rear. Wastewater goes in here and then it comes out of your drain here. You'll have to connect your hose here on here. If you're uh, going to drain your sewage tank, then you have to open this valve towards you. So opening any of these valves is towards you this way. Closing it is back that way. When you're finished draining your wastewater, you would put your cap back on Rotate it clockwise until it meets the end of travel so you don't have any leaks. Then we can put our cap back on here. This is our water 
uh, compartment. That was our drainage compartment in the water bay. This is the filter wrench we were talking about earlier. This is what opens and closes this canister so that you can install your whole house filter so that all of the water that's coming in your coach is gonna be filtered uh, from any sediment uh, that might be in the water. To unlock that, just put your wrench in and turn, tightening or loosening. So that would be removing it like this and then putting our filter in and then replacing it. Then once you've got it replaced, tighten with the wrench. Make sure you don't lose that. There are low point drains here. The blue one is your cold low point drain and your red one is your hot water low point drain. You wanna, you wanna drain your low points if you're going to winterize the coach. After you've drained all the water out of the low points for both the cold and the hot, then you would close them when you're finished. This is the outside shower. This is your water pump switch. The maximum amount of pressure that we want to see in our fresh water connection would be 60 pounds, no more. So we want to connect our hose to supply fresh water here. This connection, it looks the same, but it is for rinsing the sewage tank or the black tank. So when, when we're finished draining the sewer, we can hook our fresh water connection here and rinse the black tank out. If we're doing that, we wanna leave the black tank valve open so all the rinse water drains out. Then we put our caps back on when we're finished with those. There is a separate valve here that you can turn fresh water tank fill. So if we're, we put that in the up or on position, then the water coming in the fresh connection will be filling the fresh water tank. Once the fresh water tank is full, we'd want to turn it clockwise or horizontal to turn it off because if the fresh water tank is full and you leave it on and there's water pressure here, which there is when you have it turned on from the hose that you're supplying from, it will overfill the fresh water and come out underneath the coach. This again is our water pump. If we are not connected to a water supply, but we have fresh water in our fresh water tank, we can turn our water pump on here and see the light illuminate. And when that happens, we'll be able to turn our water for our outside shower or inside water shower or bathroom, kitchen. And as long as we have our water pump on, we'll be able to have water pumping out of the fresh tank into the house. So that's what you need to turn on if you, you're not connected to uh, a fresh water supply called city connection here. If you're connected to a city water connection, you don't need your water pump on, so leave that off if you have city water connected. Uh, there's a note up here, if you have a whole house water filter, be sure and remove that filter and the housing and reinstall the housing before running antifreeze. In other words, we don't want you to run the potable antifreeze through this filter. Remove it first uh, because that, then you won't be able to use that filter again. In the next compartment forward, you'll see a line here that's actually the line that you connect to your potable antifreeze when you're winterizing the coach. Again, remove the whole house filter first. Put this hose, remove the plug, put this hose in your winterizing solution. 
and you'll see a valve here that you need to open and close the other one. Turn your water pump on. That will pull the winterizing solution into the coach. Then you'll need to go in the coach and turn on the water line valves to all the appliances, shower, flush the toilet, sink, so that all of the water lines inside have been operated on so that all the winterizing solution has gone into the coach, um, into the shower, and all of the lines are filled with the winterizing solution, including the traps, the P-traps of all areas in the coach. After that, we can put our cap back on, turn the water pump off, reverse these valves, and then we can store the coach after it's winterized. Inside of this compartment area is a water pump here, our water pump, uh, and um, our, um, lift our lift pump. The lift pump needs, or is, a lift pump operates on 120 volts so that any of the water that comes out of the kitchen sink goes into this lift pump, that needs to be uh, powered 120 volts to push that fluid or that gray water into the gray tank. There's more storage in this compartment. You have your own end generator here. Refer to your owner's operator's manual for service, but this is a, a switch that you can operate manually, so you can actually turn on your generator from the outside. You do that right here at the switch that illuminates here. If you press it and hold, it'll start the generator, and then the opposite direction will shut it off. It's priming and preheating now. And to turn it off, just press it off, so you would want to run your generator if your batteries are low or if you're not plugged in and you want to run uh, 120 volt appliances in the house. Oil level and um, antifreeze fill are here to check your levels for fluid. With the generator turned on, we still need to make sure that this breaker for the generator power going into the gray cord back at the transfer switch is actually turned on or up. If for some reason it's tripped, it'll be down and off. If that is down and off, then we won't have any power going into the coach, even if the generator is running. So if you're going to check, make sure that once it's turned on, that that breaker is flipped up so that you have the power from the generator going into the house. There are two uh, wire lanyards here. They're here for your coach air supply. The air supply in every coach uh, may get moisture buildup in the lines for your air system, which includes your air brakes. And you want to get that moisture out. If you pull on this, you'll hear air coming out of the system for your airlines in your whole coach, you'll need to pull them both. And what that does is it helps get rid of that moisture. So come back here, get rid of the moisture by pulling on these two lanyards. Uh, that's on the freight liner side. And our last compartment is our battery tray compartment for our house batteries and our chassis batteries and our DEF. To service these batteries, we have small locking pins here, so we can push the tray back slightly, lift the locking pin up. On both sides, there's a locking pin that we want to lift up and remove. And now I can pull the tray towards me, and I can service these batteries. Uh, why do you want to service these batteries? Because they are lead acid. These top compartments can, can be unlocked and this removed to check the water level 
and if you need to add fluid to the battery, use distilled water. So you wanna check each battery every several months to make sure they have fluid above the plate. The batteries above are AGM batteries and they will not need to have any fluid added because they're glass mat batteries. In the event that you might be using your coach and you lose power inside, but your battery disconnect is on, there is a fuse here. And if the fuse is blown, you'll be able to see that it needs to be reset by this button here. So if you have a loss of power, you can reset this. <clears throat> if you have a loss of power, there's another fuse on this side. This side cannot be reset but you can check power. Your service tech will be able to check power here and here. He should have power on both sides. If you don't have power on the forward side, this fuse would need to be replaced, but this one can be reset. When you're done with service in this compartment, just push the tray back in place and put your locking pins back in to lock the tray so it doesn't move. There are no walls or floors in this compartment. That's why we have a little dust here, but there, there can't, this cannot be a closed compartment because uh, there are certain gases that may emit from these batteries that needs to go into the outside atmosphere air. This is your DEF tank. Your DEF tank can be filled right here. Just add your DEF. Make sure your cap's sealed back and tight when you put it back in place. Just in front of the DEF tank, is the equalizer uh, reservoir for your jacks. You can check the fluid level just by a flashlight pointing at the tank. You'll be able to see the level of the automatic transmission fluid in that tank. These are the solenoids that operate your jacks. Here at the center of the full wall slide, we have our Truma AquaGo continuous water heater. So to service the water heater or to check it, you have an unlock button at the top and just let this come down. You've got the schematic. Um, uh, obviously this door must always be closed during operation. So you don't wanna operate this unless this door is closed. Um, and there's also some additional warnings here that cover the operation of this unit. In the event that the control on the inside is turned on, but it just doesn't work, you can actually disconnect that plug on that inside control and turn it on manually right here. So just remember that if your control knob inside isn't working, you can still come out here by unplugging it in there and turning it on manually here. This operates on LP gas, so you wanna make sure if it's not working that you have LP in your tank. Right now we have the slide room moving in and we always want to run the slide room in or out when we're on our air ride suspension. So when we come to our destination, we're on our air ride and that's when we want the slide to move out, then our jacks would go down. We want to run the slide room in when we're on air. So. When we get to a destination, we want to check this gap. This gap is called a reveal. As long as this gap is about a quarter to three eighths of an inch all the way around, we can run that slide room out. If we see that the distance between this fascia trim and this Z trim is touching, we don't want to run the slide room out until we get the coach in a more level position. Once we get it in a more level position, then the gap should be open far enough that we'll be able to run that slide room out. At the top of the slide room is a slide topper awning. As the slide moves out or in, that unwraps a fabric that covers the roof of that slide room. So before you run that slide all the way in. You want to look on both ends to make sure there's no branches or 
uh, any maybe snow that got put under there uh, in, if you're in bad weather, just make sure that nothing is blocking the movement of the slide as it goes in underneath the fabric, between the fabric and the roof of the slide topper. That's just gonna ensure that uh, when you close the slide, nothing is gonna get wrapped up in that fabric and damage your awning, your slide topper awning, or keep it from going all the way in. This is the camera that is for uh, this side of the coach facing to the rear when we turn our left turn signal on. And again, the mirror adjustment, if we need to make uh, uh, a whole adjustment on the entire uh, rock forward or back of the mirror or side to side, we loosen the two um, Allen wrench nuts here, make our adjustment and then retighten. 